So for project one, what we're going to be looking at is turning a massing model into a planar model. And one of the main reasons that we use planar modeling is for exporting to programs for digital fabrication or for analog types of fabrication to be able to actually make these models. So some of the techniques that are covered here will not directly relate to how you would draw this model for um, say a drawing. So where all of your walls would be totally connected here, we're actually going to be looking at how would you construct the ceiling the floor and all four walls as separate pieces, let's say of chipboard or something like that. So how do we rationalize this form down into something that's able to actually be fabricated? So what I'm looking at here is a rough size of your site for studio. And I expect that you guys will be using a massing model that you already have. I just made a pretty simple massing here to show some of the concepts that we're going over. It should cover a good amount of the types of different situations that you guys have going on in your models but there might be little tweaks along the way where you have to um, sort of read between the lines of what these tutorials are getting at in order to actually execute some of the planarization techniques. So the first thing that we're going to look at is if we have our massing model, and let's say instead of having this, if I have just something that's a rectangular extrusion, so I'm just going to extrude this down again, and let's say that we have something that looks similar to this, and for the sake of the demonstration, I'm just going to make this a little bit taller. So we'll do a scale 1D, and we'll just make this into a sort of rectangular prism here. So if I wanted to go in and fabricate this, what I would want to do is I would want to first explode this, and then I would take a look at how would I construct my ceiling, how would I construct my floor, and then the four walls. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drag over the four walls and just do a hide. And then what we can do with these is if we do an offset surface, you could also do extrude surface. And then if we look up here and we see solid equals no, let's go ahead and change solid equals yes. And you see the arrows are actually pointing down. So if I was to offset this surface right now, it would offset down. I'm gonna offset back up into the geometry so that my actual outer boundary doesn't get any, um, any larger than it already is. So you can see here, flip all, um, the little F is underlined. So if I just hit F on the keyboard and then enter, it will automatically flip those. And then if I hit enter, that will then go ahead and extrude that surface um, by whatever increment I have. So I'm gonna do everything in one foot increments. I would suggest that you also do the same just for the sake of, of what this project is trying to get at. You don't really need to do different floor thicknesses and wall thicknesses for this. It's more introducing some digital concepts um, and some fabrication concepts. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing here. So offset surface, again, we'll need to flip. You'll see that my distance equals one and I'm in feet, so that's good. Um, and then we can do both sides equals no, solid equals yes, and enter. So then if I type show, what I'm going to see, whoops, a little left over here. So what we're gonna see is when I highlight these wall panels, um, it's going to actually intersect with where my roof and where my floor is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all four of my walls here and I'm going to do a scale 1D. So that's scale one dimensional. And I'm gonna go from my midpoint up to my end point, and then we'll just come down and you'll see that that scales down um, nicely inside of there. If you don't wanna do it that way, you can select one side, you can go from the end to the top, and then you can scale down to there. And then again, you can go from that end to that point and then scale up. That would also um, end up doing the same thing. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then let's go ahead and hide two of our walls. So we're just gonna work with the two ends here. So again, if we do offset surface, we'll do a flip and we'll extrude um, both of these inward. So you see that our box ends up looking like that. If we do another show, so again, you'll see that we're too long here. So we're gonna do another scale 1D. We'll go again from my midpoint to my end and scale those in. And then if we do an offset surface and we flip. So this is the general idea of what we're trying to do with this project. So basically now we have something where if we were to construct this out of something like chipboard, we would have these two end caps. We would have these that go in between it and then we would have a floor and we would have a roof that goes on top of it. So this is how you would go about actually constructing it from sort of flat pack um, two-dimensional profiles. 
So here what we're looking at is everything has to be at a right angle. So everything is an extruded piece of material. Nothing is a three-dimensional miter or anything like that. Everything is two-dimensional. Now, obviously, if we're looking at something that um, becomes 3D, uh, sorry, not 3D, but angled, you're not going to get these really nice miters here. And that's totally okay for the sake of something like a, a, a model that you're actually making with the laser cutter. You won't always have neatly mitered corners. But because of how thin the material are, you won't really see those in the end. What we're trying to get at is that none of our materials are actually intersecting with each other, and they're all either touching at one line, one point, or one um, sort of face. So this is the general concept that we're going to look at. But once we look into your massing models, it becomes just a little bit more complicated. So if we go ahead and copy this model out, um, basically what we're going to go through here is what I the way I would start. Um, then we're going to go into walls and different types of walls. So here we obviously has, have a pretty simple one, but here we have something that actually has a notch out of it. So how we would go in and handle that, how we would handle something like a sloped roof here, and then um, some subtle fixes that you would want to do to make sure that the model would actually come together in, in the end. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'll just change the layer of this. I would always make a copy of this, so don't just do it over what you're working on. And what we'll do is we're just going to run an explode here. Then holding shift, I'm going to click through and I'm just going to hide all of my walls. So hide, grab all of your walls and then type hide. And then what you'll see is you're just left with some floor plates and some roofs. So again, we're going to use offset surface. You can also use extrude surface. Um, you see extrude surface works very similar to an extrude curve command. So if we do offset surf, flip, we're going to extrude that by a foot. We'll do the same thing here with the ceiling of that down. We'll do this one, flip, enter, extrude that up, and then the same thing here. So that'll come down. So basically here now what we have modeled is floor plates. We have this volume um, as a roof and a floor as well. So um, we're going to now go into, we'll do a show. And then I'm going to just take all of my walls and add a new layer and we'll call this walls temp right click change object layer and we'll keep those on that layer so we basically have something that looks like this so obviously we have some walls that are simple they're um, very similar to the method that we just used and then we have other walls that are going to get a little bit more complicated so again let's do something similar to the, that we did last time so let's go ahead and hide all of our sides and we'll just leave the planes that are going in one direction. If you have planes that are going sort of one like that and one like that, you can um, still do it this way. You're just gonna basically need to pick one wall to, um, to start with. So the first thing we're gonna do here is a scale 1D. We'll start with the easy wall first. We'll go from the bottom to the top, scale that down. We'll go from there to there and we'll scale that up. Then if we do an offset surface, we'll offset that in and everything looks good there. Again, same thing here, but in this case, we actually can't do a scale 1D because if we do a scale 1D here, what that's going to do is it's actually going to move. Here, I'm actually dead in the center of it, so it doesn't really affect it, but you can see how a scale 1D will actually move where that geometry is. So I'm going to go ahead and use a different technique here. So if we draw just a line where the bottom of this roof surface is. You can also use a plane. Um, you can use basically whatever you want here. You can use this line and run a trim. And then we're gonna trim that little part off the top. We can then delete that line. Again, we'll grab a polyline. We'll draw it from here. We can click and then do a trim and we're gonna wanna click our green surface. So then once we have that all trimmed out, we can again do an offset surface and we offset, in, offset that in and then it looks good again. Um, so this is because we have a little bit of an interference here. So you can't just do the simple scaling techniques. Now, these ones are actually going to even have a little bit more of an issue with them because we have a sloped roof to deal with here. So what we're going to look at here is if we do an offset surface and we do a flip, but we don't do a solid here, what that's going to allow us to do is get a plane that's going to be at the inside 
face of where that wall is. And the reason that that's important for something where you have slopes is because here, if we trim out based on where that is intersecting and then we offset in towards the inside of the building, we're still going to get an interference here. So because we're actually offsetting downward, what we're going to look for is actually where this plane intersects with um, the bottom of this roof. So we're gonna go ahead, make sure your intersect snap is on down here. And we're just going to draw a line here and we'll use that line to trim out the top. And then on the bottom, we can use any of the techniques that we've already gone over. Um, so we can just grab a line here, use the intersection point. And again, we'll do a run trim down here. Then we can actually delete that one. And then if we do an offset here, so offset surface, and you see how it didn't offset solid here. So let's delete that, do offset surface, make sure that we're solid here. And then when we offset out, you'll see that we're only hitting at a single line here, but that's actually okay. So in a in an actual model that you're constructing by hand, what you're going to want to happen here is for it to hit at that point so that this actually stays totally planar. If we try to hit at this point, what's going to happen is it's actually going to push our roof up out of plane. Um, so this would actually be the proper way to construct this in um, something like a laser cut model. So again, here, what we're looking at is if we offset inward, We're again, not gonna do solid. So let's hit S, enter to change solid to equals to no. Then again, we're looking at our intersection point. If we hold shift, that will give us an orthographic line. So again, we can run a trim here and we can trim out those pieces. So the problem that we're then going to run into is if we now delete this outside surface and we do an offset here. So offset surface, let's do solid. You see that again, we're actually hitting right here. Um, so we have a problem because our the bottom of our surface actually, the smaller side is actually on the right side here. So if we offset in, that doesn't work out. So what we're gonna do here is we're actually just going to take a point from the lowest point here and we'll just draw a line longer than it has to be and we can move it over. Then another technique we can use here is we can extrude this. So we're, it's trying to extrude up and down. So if we use our D or direction here, that will allow us to select a direction. So let's go ahead and extrude it in that direction. And then if we do what's called the Boolean split, what that's going to allow us to do is take this single surface and then it's going to ask us to select cutting surface. So if we select this as our cutting surface, it's going to allow us to then just delete that top portion of that. So what that's going to allow us to do is again, we'll just hit at one single point there, as opposed to hitting at um, a, a, an intersection where this actually tries to overlap with our wall there. So that's how you would go through and do those two walls. So we'll chain, right click, change the object layer on those. Then let's type show. And now we have some similar tasks that we have to do here. So. Let's take a look at this wall. Again, this wall will be our easy one here. So let's start here. We'll go ahead and do a scale 1D to get this right. Then again, we have two walls at the end. So now we actually have to do one in the other direction as well. So once you get to this point, you might say, well, instead of doing that, couldn't I just go ahead and draw a new surface in there? And the answer is yes. You can start to actually replace surfaces at this point and then we can do an offset surface. We'll flip that and offset that inward. We can right click, change object layer. Again, here, what we're looking at is we have an issue at the top. We have an issue at that side. Um, so actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a polyline here and I'm just gonna draw this out to what my surface should look like. Then I can click this and I can actually just do an extrusion here and I can extrude this by one foot and that will make my wall. So you actually don't even need a surface there. You can just start with uh, an extrusion, uh, start with a curve and then use an extrusion. So here, what we're looking at is we basically need a surface to go in between that wall and that wall. So what I'm gonna do is 
Um, you can either draw a polyline or we're going to use a command here called dupe edge. So D U P edge. So we're going to select that edge and that edge. So we can see this edge is actually already going up to the top, but this edge stops a little short. So let's go ahead and do a scale 1D here. I'm going to go from the bottom to here and then just scale it up higher than it really needs to go. Then do it again and we can scale it down to where it intersects. An alternative to this would be if we run an extend command and we try to extend to this. That will allow us to just do that all in one shot so we can do it like that. Here, let's try another technique. So we can grab both of those lines. We have two lines here, so let's do a loft between those. That will basically loft from that line all the way up to that line. Then we can do an offset surface. We'll flip that and we'll extrude that inward. And again, you won't line up perfectly over here, but if you were making an actual physical model, this would be the way that you would want that joint to, to look, um, to look something like this. If you weren't going to get into actually mitering that corner and mitering that piece, um, this would be very, very close to accurate. Um, especially if we consider this at something like a 16th of an inch equals a foot where these all represent one 16th of an inch planes, um, in this piece. So here, what we can look at is since I know this is symmetrical, what I can do is let's run a mirror here and we'll just mirror this across. There's multiple different ways to make all of these walls. I'm just trying to show um, a couple of them. And then let's say we wanted to go from here to the end there. And to show this better, I'm just gonna hide a couple of pieces. So we basically need to cut this corner out. So let's use an extrude to extrude that inward. And then we can run a Boolean, sorry, Boolean split. We're going to split that piece with this extrusion. And then you see, I can just go ahead and delete that piece. So once you're done there, you can type show and then all of your pieces will show up here. So you see now we have a, an actual piece where if we wanted to take these, uh, take this totally apart, we could actually do that um, and laser cut this piece. We could laser cut that piece. We could laser cut this and they would all come together um, really, really nicely. So there's one more step to this and that's basically to um, now look at some of the joints that we have between these pieces. So you can see what's happening here. Um, if we go ahead and take the roof off, you can see what's happening here actually is that we have um, a little overlap because we basically offset this one. We didn't offset this one in at all. We just extruded it up. But since we offsetted this in, we're actually leaving ourselves a little ledge here. So if we were making an actual model, what we would want to do is actually draw out. So if we turn our perpendicular snap on, we can actually draw out that little extra bit. So I'm using basically the equivalent to guidelines here and I'm trying to add a chunk and then I'll go ahead and extrude that. And then what we could do is we could either do a Boolean union here. So that would look something like that if we did a union or if we were really concerned about our model and we didn't want that joint um, to exist there at all, what I would do is probably take a polyline and trace this. You can also um, do different methods to extract the edges and things like that. And then what we could do is we could extrude this and we'll go ahead and extrude that down by one foot. Then we can get rid of all those guide curves that we just made. And then when we do a show, we'll take this roof off for now to just show how this is coming together. And you see that we end up with something like this, um, where this actually butts up perfectly to there. So you can go through and do a bunch of these hacks. This would end up be uh, becoming a notch. Um, so I'll show basically what this looks like in the next video. But you would go through and add a bunch of detail to these pieces. You would extend this roof out to meet up with that. And then there would be a tiny notch in either that piece or that piece, which extends over to completely seal off the model. 
So this is basically the um, how to planarize this. Um, I'm also going to go over a, a more two-dimensional way of doing this through either AutoCAD or Rhino. Um, basically going through and constructing this from scratch from a plan. Um, so that would be another option. Um, but this is um, one way. There's a bunch of different techniques to this, um, different sort of um, specifics to each project you'll go through. But this is how you would go through and create a clean model that you could then make from planar material through digital or analog means.